let's look at uh, some of the most common calculations which uh, people tend to do for making a statistical analysis. The two major aspects that uh, would be looked at, one is a measure of central tendency. There are four or five mechanisms we will discuss uh, on various measures of central tendency. And uh, we also talk about uh, the different measures of dispersion or variation. If you remember uh, in one of our uh, earlier uh, chapters, we have discussed that there are five characteristics to a data. And uh, the first two of them being uh, the centeredness of the data and uh, the dispersion in the data. So in this uh, chapter, we will be focusing uh, on how do we measure the centeredness of the data as well as the dispersion that is present in the data. So let's start uh, looking at uh, these two key aspects in this chapter. So moving further, when we talk about the measures of central tendency, which talks about what is the value which represents which represent the center or the middle of my data set. What is that particular value that represents the middle or the center of my data set? What is that representative value? So there are uh, multiple mechanisms to determine them. The most common things which people use are the concepts of mean, median and mode. These are the three different ways of defining the centeredness of a particular data. And as we all know, mean is the most common out of those three, which is nothing but people also use a word called average for that. Average is nothing but the sum of all the data values. If you are given a data values like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 being the five different data values, the sum of all these data values, which is 15, Divided by the count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the count of the data values, which will give me the mean. So, the way the mean is computed is all the data values that you have, you sum them up and uh, you take, uh, you divide by the total number of values, which will give you the mean value. And depending on whether we are computing uh, the mean for a sample or a population, the terminologies differ. When we are computing the mean of a sample, we call it as X bar. When we find the mean of a population, we represent it as mu. The terminologies also should be slightly comfortable for us. Whenever we see X bar, it means uh, that it is representing a sample. Whenever we see mu, we can very well say that it represents a, a population. So the sum of all the data values divided by number of elements in the sample which is represented by small n or the number of uh, data points in the entire population represented by capital N. So that is what is the definition of the mean. So whether we are using a sample or a population, the calculation remains the same. The sum of all the data values divided by the total number of data values and Come some of the advantages people uh, look at with the usage of mean is relatively reliable because any calculation which we make, there should be a lot of reliability to the calculation. What it says is, if you are taking up a good sample, good sample size, which is more random in nature and all those characteristics being satisfied, whatever is the different sample that we are taking, the mean of the sample is more and more consistent compared to the other measures. So if I am taking out of a population of 100, if I pick up some 10 of them randomly and try to find out the mean, and some other 10 randomly and try to find out the mean, the means will be more or less uh, closer enough compared to the other measures like median or mode. So that is one prime reason why people uh, look at mean as a better measure compared to a median or mode. But however, mean also has uh, 
some disadvantages. On a positive note, mean takes every data value into account because it is adding all the values. Each value will have an importance in the calculation of the mean. But that itself is a disadvantage also. If one of the values is extremely large or extremely small compared to the others, which means if that one value or few values are outliers, the mean will get influenced heavily because in the summation, that particular value will have a very high influence because it is very extreme. The summation will have an impact and as a result, the mean also will get badly impacted. That is why we call mean is a non-resistant measure. What do I mean by this word non-resistant measure? It cannot resist the change if one value is extremely distorted. So it is very sensitive to the outliers. So that is one negative thing that works for the mean. But otherwise because of its heavy reliability, we use mean more compared to the other uh, modes of central tendency. Then looking at the median, the way median decides the center, the way mean decides the center is you add up all the values and divide by the total number of values which will be the center. Whereas the median defines center as you arrange all the data in either the ascending order or the descending order pull out exactly the middle value. In that, the procedure it says is first sort the values, either in the ascending or in the descending. See how many values are there. Is the total number of values odd? 1, 3, 5, something like that. Or is it even? If it is odd, then pull out the value which is lying exactly in the center of the data set. That is what is called as a median. Whereas if the total number of values is even, for example, if my data set is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I have arranged them in the ascending order. The exact middle one, which is this one, is what I call as the median. But if my total data set contains even number, there are six number of values, then my median will be the average of the middle two because I will not have one single middle. So, I will have the mean of the middle 2 which will result in 3.5 being the median in this case. So, there are two ways of deciding the median depending on whether my total data is uh, odd or even. If my total number of data points is odd, directly you can pull out the middle value and call it as the median. If the total number of data values is even, you try to find out the average of the middle 2 values and you can call it as a median. One thing we have to we have to keep in mind, we are always uh, using the word called average for uh, calculating uh, the center. Whenever we say center, we used to use the word called average. But please not use that particular term called average. Whenever we talk about the centeredness of the data, Use the measures as mean, median or mode rather than using the word average. Though average will refer to mean, but it's better to avoid the term called average. It's better to use terms like mean, median or mode. And uh, when we come to mode, this is the other way that it defines the centeredness of the data. It simply says the value that occurs with the highest frequency. The value that occurs many number of times, maximum number of times, out of all the other possible values, is what is called as the mode. But what is the problem with this? In some cases, there could be two different values that can come with the greatest frequency, same frequency, but the highest frequency. Let's say there could be a number 10 and there could be a number 20, which are occurring 10 times each in the data. Then what is happening is, that particular data set can have two modes and we call that particular because the, the way we are defining the mode is the number which repeats maximum number of times in a data set. So there could be a possible